Stavrov Nikolaus joins me now, who's a senior executive of Aspen and also somebody who sits on the BRICS Business Council. Stavrov, you were here to present and you have interest in all member states. Where is the growth opportunity for Aspen and in general with regards to industrialization of BRICS? So, look, I think first of all, uh, if, if you look at the five BRICS countries as pharmaceutical markets, they, they all present growth opportunities. So if you take a market like Russia, very underinvested in healthcare, per capita underinvestment. So there's huge uh, opportunities in the Russian market. I mean, China speaks for itself. I mean, the, the growth levels of China are, are staggering. So for a, a player like Aspen, who's got niche therapeutic products or niche therapeutic segments that it operates in, such as anesthesia, such as uh, injectable thrombosis, high potency molecules, these are all niche areas. China presents a fantastic uh, opportunity for Aspen. Similarly with Brazil, We've got uh, quite a strong business in Brazil now. We've been invested in Brazil for around uh, almost a decade now, and we're starting to see the fruits of that perseverance and investment in Brazil. But of course, Davrov, part of these problems is that these economies are as vast as these member states themselves. I mean, you look at some uh, an economy like India, which is growing at about 7%. You look at an economy like China, 6 7% there and thereabouts. But the other economies are under a bit of pressure. How do you, how do you safeguard your interests during those moments of pressure? So, look, I, th I think uh, the one common theme here is emerging markets are going to be to a degree volatile. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you classify China as emerging any longer. Mm -hmm. Probably isn't. But if you look at Brazil, South Africa, lo 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 you know, huge similarities there in terms of economic performance. But what is a common thread and a common theme is that both markets that are underperforming economically still have a strong healthcare emphasis. Mm -hmm. Aspen's a healthcare company, so I think we we correctly positioned in what are called pharma emerging markets to capitalize, even in underperforming economies that are emerging, to capitalize in the healthcare sector. You are here with uh, also wearing your other hat as uh, part of the BRICS Business Council. What are you hearing from your counterparts, such as Huawei, such as uh, uh, AG Motor Works? What are you hearing? What are they saying BRICS needs to do to f put itself ahead of the digital industrial curve? So, look, I think a starting point is that today's uh, session was a presentation to the five uh, BRICS trade ministers. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, it was a strong, there was a strong focus around industrialization. But what role does the digital economy or the fourth industrial revolution play in, uh, in, in further enhancing industrial output and industrial collaboration across the four countries? So, uh, sorry, the five countries, if you include our own South Africa. And what's come out very clearly at a council level is we need to look at those complementarities and areas of synergy. So if we're strong in anesthetics in South Africa, and Russia is weak in anesthesia. How do we collaborate to get these products to, to Russia mm -hmm. and more broadly to uh, markets outside of the BRICS formation? Mm -hmm. So I think that was a strong focus, but also acknowledging just how pivotal the digital economy is going to be in something as basic as manufacturing data management, you know, cyberspace, all of those elements are, are critical elements to future industrialization and growth. Eh? Two-part question to wrap up on. One, these are all, uh, uh, the five member states are a group, but they're also individual economies. There's, a, there's always a fear that they compete with each other on certain areas. And then secondly, what, what do your counterparts want to, to see these, uh, 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 what do your counterparts in the Business Council actually think that can be done to improve the, the knowledge of the workforce that will come into that digital revolution? Okay, so I think firstly you're right, the, the five BRICS countries are extremely diverse, they're certainly not homogenous, and each market in the five comes with its own set of opportunities, its own set of challenges. And, and it's really, as, as, a, as business people sitting on the council, it's how do you harness those opportunities to create those growth opportunities that everyone's looking for. At, at a particular council level, just taking it down to a more sort of practical level, I think what the council would like to see is greater collaboration with the governments to remove some of the regulatory and administrative burdens mm -hmm. that exist. Like, uh, like for example, uh, if you need to 
start importing I mean, this a specific example if you need to start importing a reagent into South Africa that is going to unlock an investment opportunity off, uh, locally and an export opportunity uh, offshore those sort of things that can take months if not years to get approval for uh, through for example Department of Agriculture in our instance that that gets accelerated so that you unlock an investment opportunity locally and you create export opportunities South Africa is only going to grow if we attract domestic and foreign investment and also if we have a strong export focus Aspen's very focused on the export space but we need to deregulate those elements that are hindering progress in export opportunities I thank you for your time. Thank you so much. That's Stavros Nikolaos, who's a senior Aspen executive, really streamlining his take and his presentation when it comes to this third meeting of industrial ministries of the BRICS member countries, and really how government can streamline things and maybe take out some of the red tape in doing business. We'll see how much of that filters through to the yeah. policymakers that gather here today. Uh, Karabo, I actually wanted to come back to you and I hope you can keep Stavros uh, uh, on the camera because I wanted to pose a question to him around the kind of trade challenges. Here. Thank you very much. The kind of trade challenges that we have seen coming with the coming of Donald Trump here. and whether that presents an opportunity for South African companies to reorient their export focus. What does you think about uh, the role of BRICS in trying to counter some of the disruption that we have seen coming as a result of President Donald Trump's policies? So basically what Godfrey is asking is, can BRICS take advantage of the trade war that is being waged by Donald Trump right now to really counter and maybe take advantage of some of the opportunities? So, look, I think what uh, the BRICS formation, and certainly at a council level, mm -hmm. we've had a discussion around the, let's call it the multilateral trade environment that prevails at the moment. I, I think what, we, what we're not in favour of as a council is becoming highly protectionist. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a degree of protectionism I think that is necessary to, for example, stimulate localisation, mm -hmm. but not to the extremes that we're seeing presently uh, globally. Yeah. And I think if, uh, if left undeterred, I think these trade wars are going to land up damaging smaller economies. So I think uh, we need to move away from unilateralism into a more multilateral global approach to That's trade. Message and to sell to Donald Trump, my friend. No, I, th I, th I think it is, but you know, you've got to look at where the specific niche opportunities are, like I mentioned earlier. And, you know, if you, if you use those as building blocks, then you create critical masses that can take on other markets that are being unilateral.